Welcome back to the channel. This video marks the first episode of our SQL series and today I'm going to talk about database design. So why is database design important? Building a good database is like building your own house. You can't build it without any blueprint. If you do not take time to map out the needs of the project and how a database can actually meet these needs, you may delay the whole project when changes have to be made. In today's video, I'm going to share with you several things to look out for in a database design. The first thing is to really understand the intention of a database. Why will you even need it in the first place? Well, if you have multiple users accessing a set of data, be it to edit or upload information, using a database will allow for more users to do that without having an error message telling you that the file is locked. The next reason is when you're dealing with huge set of data. A database would be suitable for that long-term storage as opposed to a spreadsheet. If you find yourself dealing with many sets of data that are uniquely different, a database would be a great option for you to manage this data. The next thing to do is to actually identify and gather every information you have. Here, we try to have an understanding of what kind of data we can gather. So things like customer information, like emails, addresses, contact numbers, and purchasing history, just to name a few. The idea here is to come up with every possible attributes that we can gather and sort them out afterwards. This moves us to the next point. Here, we need to determine what kind of insights we are trying to obtain. Ask ourselves how this information can help us answer existing questions or solve existing problems. For example, you need the age attribute from your users if you want to understand if a product is suitable for a certain age group. However, you will not need the age attribute if you want to measure the chemistry performance of a school cohort since majority of them are of the same age. Next, we actually need to set up table relationship and identify ways to link the tables together. So as you can see from this table, everything is actually merged in one big table. So here we have the first name of the customer, the last name of the customer, email, address, contact numbers, item purchased by the customer, the quantity purchased, date time purchased, the prices of each item, the item type, the country of origin, and also the supplier. The issue with this is that if a single user decides to buy multiple items, this whole table can actually build up. So this is not an effective way of storing data. So it's important for us to actually split it into their respective tables. So if we move on to our SQL, so here, let's see if we actually import everything out. So we have a table called data. So here you can see that we have uh, two customers that bought uh, their respective items on the 19th of November. So we have Dave Wilson, his email address, the, his address, his, uh, his, his full address, his contact number, the item purchased by him, the quantity purchased, date time, prices, item type, and also the country of origin of the item purchased, and also the supplier that the grocery store got uh, the item from. So next one, we have uh, Rose Mahan. So the issue with this table is that if let's say Dave decides to buy 100 different types of items, so you're going to get 100 rows of data. So imagine if the grocery stores have um, 10, 20 people come in every day, and then you, you eventually you're going to have thousands of rows of data for just one day. So we feel that this is not an effective way of actually storing data. So a great way is actually to split them into their respective table. So here I've actually split that single table into three different tables. We have the customer table, and then we have the purchase history and also the item. The customer table has a primary key called customer ID. So the primary key actually uniquely identify a customer so each uh, each customer is actually assigned a customer id so it can be one two three up to infinite so the same applies for item so we have the here we have the item id which uniquely identify each item so for purchase history we have this item id foreign key and then we have the customer id foreign key which is actually relates to the respective uh, primary key of these two tables. So I will be actually touching on this primary key and foreign key in the next tutorial. So here you can see that if, if we want to actually link or build up relationship and join all these three tables, we can actually do so. So you can see this customer ID can be linked to the purchase history. 
and also the foreign key itself can also be linked to the item table. So if we actually look back into our SQL, we look into the respective table. So let's just look into the purchase history table. And then we have also the item table. And lastly, we have the customer table. So we can see from here, the we have actually split them into three respective table. We have Dave and Rose at the customer side. So here we have all the information of the customer. We have the email address and contact number. And then here we have all the items that we, ha we, we have in the grocery store. And also lastly, the purchase history. So as you can see here, we assign Dave with a customer ID of one and Rose with a customer ID of two. So if we look in here, um, the customer ID here, foreign key. So user one actually purchase at this time. So 12, 12. And then we have user two, which is Rose that purchase it at this time. In terms of what kind of items that they purchase, they have uh, so the item ID is linked to the specific primary key in the item table. So uh, customer one bought item one, which is the Webix. And then customer two bought the second item, which is the Ben and, Ben's and Jerry's chocolate mint cookies ice cream. So how do we actually link this table together? For example, if the manager wants to find out uh, what items are being, are being sold on the 19th of November, so what he or she can do is uh, he or she can actually utilize the primary key to link to the foreign key of the purchase history table. So I will demonstrate it here and uh, this topic I will actually be going deeper into the how you can actually do this inner join, outer join, left join, right join in the next few tutorial. So I inner join onto the purchase history table. And I will actually link the item ID with the purchase history foreign key, which is the item ID foreign key. So as you can see here, the manager will be able to see that, okay, so we have two quantities of Webix being sold um, or to this customer at this price on the 19th of November and also next one is the Ben's and Jerry's chocolate mint cookies ice cream that's being sold on the same day itself. So why is it important for us to actually split the data into their respective table? So imagine this, if you are the manager, you have to add in new items to the grocery store, let's say on a monthly basis. So if you actually add it into that big table from the data, you have to key in like now first name, now last name, now email, and also like now date time purchase, now prices, uh, now quantity purchase, because no one have actually purchased it before. And the same applies for customer. So if you want to actually add in a new customer that have actually not made any purchase before, you can key in directly into the customer data table instead of the big data table. So the issue with keying in with key in all this null value is that I mean now you do know that uh, it's, it's a null value but after several months you actually forget about it so after a year when you look back into the big data you realize hey wow why is why is there so many null values and you get confused so instead of getting confused at the start why not build in a good practice of splitting all this data into their respective table I would say database design and implementation is the cornerstone of any data-centric project and should be treated as such when you're actually developing. I hope this video have given you a great overview of database design and always remember to not rush through or neglect database design. Have a discussion with your team on how to implement it and always test run the tables with dummy data before pushing out for production. Thank you for watching the video and I hope to see you in the next one.